Your debt is purely a reflection of your habits. And so in today's video, I want to tell you about the four habits that you need to master in order for you to tell your debt goodbye. The first thing that you really need to focus on is developing a new routine of getting in the habit of checking your finances over 66 days. Now, the reason why this is so important is because you are your habits. It is one and the same. There's no detachment. You are your habits. Whatever you are programmed to normally do, that is what you will do. Think about everything that you do from the time that you wake up. You check your phone. You brush your teeth. You check the clothes. You check all of these different things. It's a habit. What I need to you to do is I need you to install the habit of just checking your finances for only five minutes a day. Can you commit to that? Is that too big of a request to ask? Is that too hard? Of course not. Come on. Once a day, five minutes, every day, you're just checking your finances. And it can even be during your work schedule, right? Even if it's during the work week, check it during your work day. One time a day, five minutes. Here's what I recommend that you do. You develop a morning checklist, okay? What are some of the things that you do to start your morning off, right? Okay, you get breakfast. Okay, you get ready for work. Add in five-minute time to check finances, um, however you choose to see fit. If you're using a budgeting tool, if you are you know, managing your money off of Excel or some different type of a way, maybe you're not managing your money at all and that's a problem. You know, I've seen a lot of people start to use um, an app called Every Dollar to help them manage their finances and keep things on track. But a lot of times people end up falling off once they get started because they don't put it into a routine. This is the reason why I'm telling you 66 days because on average, it takes 66 consecutive days of activity to be performed in order for something to become a new habit. In order for you to install a new habit, it takes around 66 days, okay? So give your mind time to program it in. Just take five minutes. You don't have to be doing a world of number crunching. All you're doing is just checking your finances, checking your account, making sure that everything looks correct. All you're doing as you're checking the money is to make sure that you are not spending at an amount that is above your means and above your own awareness. A lot of times I work with clients and they don't realize how much money they're spending every month on gas, on food, on their you know entertainment expenses, their play money. You have to have an awareness of it. That's the very first step. Just get into the habit of checking your finances, okay? The number two thing that you must do in order to get out of debt is you must become obsessed. Now, I wish that I could give you some fluffed up, you know, easy answer. I know you're thinking this is controversial. Oh, man, I'm not supposed to be obsessed. Oh, man, I'm not supposed to be making money, my God. Nobody is saying that, okay? Calm down, relax. Let me explain what I'm trying to say. If you're going to get out of debt, you can't just do it passively. You can't have a million different things going on and somehow in the midst of a million other different things, somehow debt payoff and financial freedom just becomes a, a, a bonus that happens along the way. No. If you're going to achieve debt freedom, you have to be laser focused. This has to be your number one priority. You have to put blinders on to every other thing that is around you and you got to focus on getting out of debt as quickly as you can. I remember when I was in corporate America years ago, people would laugh at me about how much I would base decisions around whether or not I still had debt. So I would have coworkers, they would go off and eat every single day for lunch, take out food, you know, everybody's at these network mixers, at these fancy restaurants, playing the corporate game, mixing and mingling. And they used to always laugh at me because every day I would come to work and I would have my same peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch. It's not that I didn't have the money to go out and buy myself a nice meal. 
is that I made a deliberate decision not to because I was obsessed with getting out of debt as quickly as possible. That was my number one focus at that time. That was my number one priority. Everything that I was doing in my day-to-day -day lifestyle was working around the concept of me getting out of debt. And if that's not how you are about it, chances are you're never going to get out of debt. Anything worth truly accomplishing in life is going to require a lot of focus. It's going to require a lot of effort. It's going to require a lot of energy and then a lot of hours. If you don't make this your primary focus, what's going to happen is, you know, somebody can invite you to something and it becomes hard to say no. And because of the fact that debt payoff is not a top priority, you just go along with it. You know, all of these expenses start coming up out of nowhere and you cannot resist the urge to buy and buy and buy because we as a people have been taught to be consumers. We are the lifeblood of society in terms of our consumerism. Black folks spend over $1.4 trillion per year in gross domestic spending. So what you've got to do is you've got to get out of passive mode about getting out of debt and you've got to make this priority number one, okay? Number three, if you're really going to get out of debt, you got to change your mindset about getting out of debt. You know, you got to take it easy a little bit. I know a lot of you guys, you hear this video, you're kind of getting wound up. Oh man, I got to manage my money. I got to check my finances. Oh man, how do I be obsessed? I don't like money. I can't stand money. Money is evil. You got to figure out how to start gamifying getting out of debt. As crazy as that might sound, right? What do I mean when I say gamifying it? Treat it like a game. You know, on some level, a lot of life and your success in it should be viewed from a gamifying mentality because really it's about getting from one level to the next. So the same way how you would play Nintendo growing up, PlayStation growing up, Sega growing up, and you would play a challenging game, you would get all the way through one level, play the boss, and you can't get to the next level until you beat the boss, the same thing that happens in life. You cannot level up until you've gotten past the challenges that are present at this current level. So start to gamify. You know, you would really be surprised how once you start the process of just paying off a little debt, you start building up momentum to be in, become inspired to pay off that much more. I'm going to give you all a secret. When I had over $90,000 uh, in student loan debt that I was paying off of after I graduated from Baylor University in 2010, um, I had no intentions of paying it off within two years time. I was more so on a five year timeline. But what happened was the minute that I started at year one, I really got focused, I locked in, I became obsessed. I made it my top priority. And once I started just paying a payment here and a payment there, I started to get in the habit of paying off the debt so that way it wasn't even that hard to manage. I started to see that some of the debts were honestly, they were getting going away a little bit easier than I thought they would. So I said, man, you know, I'm paying off this debt now and I'm feeling a little accomplished, you know? And some of these accounts were like $200 balance, $300 balance, $400 balance. I had these different accounts. And I said, you know what? If I knock this one account off, that's just gonna get me one step closer. And I would celebrate getting rid of that two to $300 debt. Okay, you don't have to wait until you're a freaking millionaire to start celebrating your accomplishments. Start celebrating the small wins along the way. And you will be so surprised how, in just following that process, you build up so much momentum that it starts to feel like a game to see how fast you could pay off a particular debt. Now that you got some steam behind you, maybe you found a little bit of extra money here, you start selling and side hustling on something there. You start looking for new avenues to get out of debt faster. It starts to become fun, believe it or not. You start saying, man, you know, all right, I set this goal for myself. I'm going to pay off this debt within three months time. Man, I know I could hit this thing. Okay, look at that. This is an extra expense. I don't even need that. Let me cut that and I'm going to do this to show and prove that I can make big game changing things happen. I cannot tell you 
how great I felt to be able to tell everybody that I graduate, graduated with, went to school with, that I paid off over $90,000 in debt. Nobody could believe it. They were like, whoa, how did you do that? What were the steps? It's a big accomplishment. Treat it like a game, though. Don't treat it like it's a big chore and it's daunting. Treat it like it's something fun because in time, once you stick with it, it honestly will be because it's going to empower you to feel a, 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 a better sense of accomplishment within yourself. Last but not least, use your emotions to get out of debt, not your logic. Uh-oh, here comes something else that Uzziah said that was just super crazy. This guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Well, I kind of do know what I'm talking about when it comes to this subject because I actually got rid of my student loan debt, okay? What I mean when I say use your emotions to get out of debt is, you know, you might be asking right now, okay, what's my approach? How do I start paying off the loans? Um, I would recommend that you pay off the debts that has the lowest balances rather than pay off the debts first that have the highest interest. Now, from a logical perspective, you would pay off the ones with the highest interest first because those are accruing the most expenses. But people are not logical. People are largely emotional, and those emotional behaviors overrides logic. Most people will be able to successfully get out of debt if they use their emotion to their benefit by just getting the emotional satisfaction of saying that you paid a debt off. You see what I'm saying? So if you have one debt that's $300 and you have another debt that's $12,000, it's gonna be a lot better for you to pay off that $300 debt first, even if it has a smaller interest rate. Why? Just so that way you can start getting in the feel good nature of being a person that's getting out of debt. You know, if you're chomping away at the $12,000, it could take you a couple years to pay that off depending upon where you're at. And you're going to lose steam along the way. You're gonna lose faith. <laughs> you're gonna lose your courage. You need things to keep you picked up. That's the reason why by you paying off the lowest balance is gonna give you the emotional high to know that this is possible and you're gonna start working up your momentum, your resilience, your consistency is gonna develop like a muscle and then along the way, you're going to be able to pay off those bigger balances one account at a time. It's a lot like going to the gym and being at the bench press. You know, everybody wants to say that they can bench press 300 pounds, but you don't put 300 pounds of weight on the bench the first time that you start benching. You have to work your way up to there for your strength and your muscles to get developed. All right, so if you enjoyed this video and you wanna be a little bit more active into becoming an owner, maybe that's the reason why you're getting out of debt because you wanna be able to start your own business, transition out of your nine to five job, get one step closer to financial independence, get one step closer to time freedom, location freedom. If you're trying to transition out of your nine to five job into having your own business that will allow you to travel the world, replace your current income, and make money from home, I want you to click the link in the description. I want you to tap this card that's above because I've put together a free step-by-step -step gift just for you that's gonna show you all of the things that you need to do to successfully transition out of your nine to five job into your own online business within a year and a half's time, okay? Now, for some people, it might take a little bit more. For some people, it could take less. Just go through the video and you put yourself on your own timeline. I'm outlining all the steps, all right? So again, go to the link in the description or tap the card above if you wanna become a business owner, which is one of the keys to wealth generation. Get down the steps so that way you can enjoy your best success, all right? Make sure to subscribe to this channel, like it, share this video, be your brother's keeper. Don't keep this channel a secret. A nation is only as strong as its weakest link, and I'll send you guys on the next video. Take care.